Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world. You can access and unblock content libraries and streaming services from other countries or place yourself at home if you are away. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware and phishing attempts for a safer surfing experience. I like to use Surfshark for securing personal information when using public Wi-Fi. Surfshark does not monitor, track or store what you do online and one account can be used across an unlimited number of devices. And now Surfshark is the first premium commercial VPN to have servers in a hundred plus countries. Use the code WHISPERS for 83% off plus 3 months free and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. Click the link in the description below. Meeting lots of new people, doing different jobs, and making new friends all over the place. And I remember when you spoke about either this book or the Celestine Prophecy. Everybody got excited. <laughs> like you'd found your people. See, we didn't go on the internet. also sounds crazy. So these books were a big deal. And uh, another book is Silence by Dick Yat Han, who I believe passed away recently. Vietnamese monk. Most of you know that. The power of quiet in a world full of noise. He wrote 
discussions about love. The most powerful and pervasive is believing that is the belief that falling in love is love or at least one of the manifestations of love. It is a potent misconception because falling in love is subjectively experienced in a powerful fashion as an experience of love. When a person falls in love, what he or she certainly feels is I love him or I love her or I love them. But two problems are immediately apparent. The first is that the experience of falling in love is specifically a sex-linked erotic experience. We do not fall in love with our children, even though we may love them very deeply. We do not fall in love with our friends. Um, we fall in love only when we are consciously or non-consciously sexually motivated. So, it's, um, it's just talking about physiological feelings of falling in love, but it doesn't define actual love. The myth of romantic love. What's the first paragraph about it? result of the mysterious nature of love is that no one has ever, to my knowledge, arrived at a truly satisfactory definition of love. In an effort to explain it, therefore, love has been divided into various categories. I define love thus, the will to extend oneself of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. That's quite nice, isn't it? The Road Less Travelled, M. Scott Beck. The 10 million copy bestseller. I'm sure it's more now. shows us the connection between personal inner peace and peace on earth. Let's take the hairs off it. Our hearts and minds are sometimes so full of noise, we can't always hear the call of life and love, or connect with the happiness that surrounds us. To hear that call and 
respond to it, we need silence. In this remarkable book, Buddhist monk and Nobel Peace Prize nominee Thich Nhat Hanh explains how mindfulness is the practice that stops the noise inside. Using anecdotes, simple Buddhist wisdom and practical exercises, he teaches us how to live mindfully so that all the in internal chatter ceases and we are left with the eloquent sound of silence. Silence shows us how to answer the call of beauty around us. Isn't that nice? Silence shows us how to answer the call of beauty around us. Through silence we are free to hear, to see, and simply be. Lovely. Have a flick through and see where we land. With sound, flipping sound. monk, I had to memorize many short verses to help me practice mindfulness. The first verse I learned goes like this. Waking up this morning I smile. Twenty-four brand new hours are before me. I vow to live them deeply and learn to look at everything around me with the eyes of compassion. Thing around me 
ourselves, and the more time we spend in mindfulness, the more we are going to become aware of our own suffering. Even though mindful breathing and quiet do put us in touch with joy, they are also likely to bring us in contact with pain, especially at first, as we become more conscious of the suffering we have been hiding from. We have a natural tendency to want to run away from suffering, but without any suffering we can't fully develop as human beings. It's quite scary, isn't it? And I know so many of us live our lives avoiding dealing with the hard things. But once we do, and it's not uh, compulsory to be successful, but to at least try, once we do, we come out of it a better person than we did when we started. I do believe that. And going through hardships does make us stronger. I wish it didn't, but it does. Practice the island of self. When the Buddha was stricken with his last illness, he knew that many of his disciples would feel lost when he died. So he taught them not to rely on anything outside themselves but to take refuge in the island of self. When you practice conscious breathing and, mind and produce mindfulness in yourself, you go back and discover the teaching within, pointing you towards the island of self. Your island contains birds, trees and streams, just like the mainland. There's ultimately no real dividing line between inside and outside. If you're not there, if you're not truly yourself on your island, there can be no real contact with the world outside. Getting in touch deeply with the inside, you get in touch with the outside also and vice versa. Genuine connection is possible only when you have enough mindfulness and concentration. So going back to your island means first of all generating mindfulness and concentration. still in a loud world. It's a common theme here, isn't there? This video. I'm going to bend it back, which I know is a bit cringy for some, but it's a floppy book, it's okay. Chapter 12, The Conversation Conundrum. The difficulty with this conversation is that it's very different from most of the ones I've had of late, which, as I explained, have mostly been with trees. And that's a quote from Douglas Adams. Many introverts find great companions in pets and trees because they don't talk. Well, they do. When I walk my dog, I can tell her everything on my mind, and she doesn't interrupt. She doesn't top it with a story of her own. She just walks with me. Ah, uh, if people were so, were only so easy, there is probably no area of greater conflict for an introvert than in the arena of social. 
social conversation that is if there are extroverts involved here's an example so the extrovert says how is your day going and the introvert taking the question in is thinking extrovert I've had the craziest day introvert yes and that's a distracted the introverts now distracted from thinking about their answer extrovert yeah it all started this morning when da -da 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 -da. so you're doing well then and then the introvert says yes oh i've got to go see ya <laughs> Thing hearth in one's soul, and yet no one ever comes. 
from the mushroom's earliest culinary awakening through getting equipped for mushroom forays to cultivating, preparing and serving the fruits of the foray wherever you live. Inside you'll find a brief but colourful history of mushroom hunting worldwide. How to get equipped for a mushroom foray. A completely illustrated guide to the common wild edible mushrooms and their poisonous lookalikes. Where to find them, how to identify them and more. Um, how to prepare and serve the fruits of your foray plus more than 30 delicious recipes, plus dozens of colourful, priceless anecdotes from living the mushroom lifestyle. I'd quite like to live a mushroom lifestyle. <laughs> One uh, mushroom that we've collected is called Chicken of the Woods. It's a really big mushroom. section on poisonous mushrooms which is interesting with loads of pictures let's have a little a little, a little flick through for a second I forgot I wasn't talking to my cats there's a section on medicinal mushrooms. I should have a, a read of something on, in there. Chanterelle mushrooms. Mushrooms have been used as medicines in Asia for centuries. It's only since the turn of the century that people in the West have taken seriously the idea that mushrooms can have a medicinal value. Although everyone recognises the value of penicillin as a fungal antibiotic, except for ergo, a fungus that para parasitizes parasitizes grasses, which has been used successfully to treat migraines and cult cluster headaches. Mushrooms are more generally fungi, or more generally fungi have been overlooked by Western medical science. There are about 500 different mushrooms found around the world that are now being referred to as medicinal mushrooms. Many are restricted to certain localities or cultures. Some have been given inflated importance because of culturally transmitted myths. But many others are now being shown to have recognised medicinal value because of extensive controlled experiments in labs worldwide. Very recently. 
recently this large, shiny, red-capped bracket of fungus was ignored by many. So that's what it looks like at the top there. Even though Chinese and Japanese cultures treated this mushroom with reverence, elsewhere it was believed that this had more to do with tradition than science. Field description soft to corky flesh to shelf fungus with flat red varnished cap and white to brown pores. The habitat is at the base and lower trunk of many deciduous hardwood trees, especially maples, oaks, elms and willows. Often ubiquitous above the base of street trees such as oaks. On hardwood trees throughout the northern hemisphere during the growing season. Um, that's the distribution, and the season is May to November. An annual species that may overwinter but then um, decays. Um, Lookalikes. Hemlock varnish shelf grows on dead conifers, especially hemlocks. Now they look similar, but they're not the same. And the uses are fruiting bodies have significant anti-tumor, immune-enhancing, cholesterol-reducing properties. The dried fruiting bodies can be pulverized and consumed as a tea. It's sold in medicinal herb stores and also readily available online. Cauliflower mushrooms, these are cute.